Hey everyone, my name is Jasko and I'm a owner of EM Machine Works. Before I tell you more about myself, I wanted to thank Practical Machinists for featuring my video on their YouTube channel. I've watched all the other videos and, and uh, I've been waiting to do improvements and things before I show my shop on the video, but it's a never ending battle. It's something to improve every day. There's something to learn every day. And I figured that I'd show my shop the way it is uh, and, I, and I'm here to learn, I'm accepting all feedback, so I will read all the comments and then we'll go from there. I usually don't make YouTube videos, so just uh, hang in there with me, let's we'll try to get to the end of this. But uh, I've been uh, machining for about four years, which isn't a very long time. I did go to school for machining, I went to a local community college and I finished a, a two-year certificate. I actually went to school for manufacturing engineering technology and that's how that's how I got on my first CNC machine and ever since that day I said this is what I want to do and and I got the certificate and I got a my first machining job in 2019 and I never looked back so uh, my first job was uh, operator on a lathe just pushing a button for a while, replacing parts, pushing a button and uh, and I got my feet into the shop, into the door and everything since then has been, uh, it's been a history. I was pretty lucky to work at a shop that I did. It was a, it was a kind of a R&D shop on the side of a, of a bigger company that that wasn't, a that wasn't a machine shop, it was a manufacturing company and the machine shop was there uh, just uh, as an R&D kind of a thing because most of the machine parts were purchased from other machine shops around the area. So that gave me an opportunity to work on a manual mill, to work on different CNC mills, to work on uh, different CNC lathes. Um, I learned about materials, I learned about tooling, I, I learned it was a small team, so I, I had the opportunity to work with uh, with my mentor and learn one on one. And I learned firsthand uh, programming on the controller, and I learned a lot about uh, G code. And all this was in a in a short period of time. So so I feel like I've been lucky that way, and and I've learned a lot. But but I still consider myself pretty new and. There's there's way too much to learn. I don't think you ever stop learning in this trade. So I'm very excited to be where I'm at and I'm, I'm very excited for the future. Starting your own shop is very stressful. It's not very easy, but I wanted to start to where I didn't depend on it. So if I had work, it would have been nice. It would have been extra money. And if I didn't have work, I would... Um, not depend on it and be um, be flexible that way so to do that I had to sell my truck so I sold my truck and bought a CNC machine instead and I just shared my wife's car my wife stays at home takes care of kids so she, she didn't need to travel to work every day which made things easier so we were able to use just one car and instead of me paying for um, monthly car payment I said I'm gonna buy a Tormac so Tormac was my first machine and and uh, the money that I used to spend on gas and, and, and my truck payment was going towards a uh, Tormac and I was working uh, full-time in a machine shop at that time and I gained enough skills to where I was able to get a little bit higher pay and, uh, and everything worked out so in an ideal world you would work eight hours at your day job and you come home and spend a little bit of a spend a few extra hours on working on the side and, earn, and earning a little bit of extra money on the side but uh, and I plan to do that for about three to five years at least before before I plan to quit my job and do this full time uh, however I got a con contract came up that I wasn't able, it was a lot of money and I wasn't able to accomplish that if I kept my day job and I was kind of looking for a way out, I was looking for a change because uh, I have left my initial shop where I 
learn machining and, and I started uh, new opportunities because they paid a lot more money uh, but I was faced with uh, some bad culture, some bad leadership so I was kind of looking for change again anyway and this contract came up and it, it was it was a lot of money over a short period of time and it was mind-blowing to me that uh, people are willing to pay for you to to make parts for them like that and uh, and I decided you know if I wait there's never gonna be a right time to do something so so I took on that contract I quit my job and then I said after this contract is over I'm gonna have a little bit of extra money and then I will figure things out and that's that's how I ended up working uh, working on my own full-time here from from the side of my house so enough of me talking let me get my face out of the camera and let's take a little shop tour uh, just a heads up this was a carport at one point to where we built some walls and made it a, made it a garage for a few years and then when I started working I was able to put my tormac in but then I ended up buying another machine and to put that in we had to take down the doors and, and put a little uh, barn doors on the garage and we kicked the wall out and made it a little bit wider so 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 my my shop is literally on the side of my house and everything around it is kind of hand built by me and my dad so uh, let's take a tour okay so this is the door that comes in from the back of my house and this is uh, where I put my chips I, I have a guy that comes out and collects chips and I just let him take it in exchange he takes it and sells it and keeps the money and that way I don't have to deal with it so he does a lot of good work for the community so I just let him keep the money and works out for both of us I recently expanded the shop so you can see it's not finished yet there's still work to be done um, and that's the front of the house over there so let's go inside and I'll kind of show you what I work with this first room here is a mess this is actually my anodizing room uh, and I have a little Harbor Freight compressor there um, it, the compressor needs update for two machines I also purchased another machine that's coming I'll tell you more about that but this is gonna need an upgrade soon uh, that down there is a air dryer that I got for free actually from a buddy of mine so I want to make that work but this compressor doesn't have enough pressure for that so uh, like I said compressor needs an update and this here is uh, just kind of a prototype thing for me building a cooling for anodizing but I've been thinking whether I want to keep doing this anodizing or not. The reason for this was because one of uh, my customers was waiting for weeks and weeks on anodizing and through the whole COVID thing. And I said, look, I can probably do that for you in-house, but it's not going to be certified. It's just going to be, um, you know, home-based anodizing. And, and, and if that works for you, um, we can make it work so we did and I did a lot of work for them and 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 worked great but um, I don't know if I want to deal with uh, with sulfuric acid and and dye and and all the chemicals that go along with it so I'm deciding what to do with this I either need to make it really nice and and, and really presentable and easy for me to work here or I just need to get rid of all of this so I, I, I've been a little bit busy, but it's a it's a decision that I need to make and we'll see what happens with this room. I have, if this anodizing is not here, I have other uses for this room. It's, it's a nice little bit of space that I can use for other things. So uh, we'll go from there. So that's a, coming through the first door and then now going into the second door is where my shop starts. Uh, here behind the door is a, uh, I, use, I don't have a sink in the shop, which also needs to happen, but I brought I brought uh, water in here and I use this uh, RO system to filter water and I use this for coolant for my machines and I also use it for anodizing. And it, and it worked great for me this way. I used to buy uh, DI water and, and there was no need for that. So I have saved a lot of money doing it this way. 
and I, and I can keep my coolant clean and and it works so well but um, I, I kind of can't wait to upgrade this and to bring a sink somewhere into the shop um, this piece of floor here is there's a rise on it because when the carport was originally here this was just a little shed that goes along the carport and when they manufactured the home that's how they used to build it they put a shed on here and then the rest of this was just a just a carport but um uh like i said building a garage here this is where the wall was you can see the wall ran along down here um and that's that's the first garage and we expanded this over here so i mean i'm dealing with it it's not the ideal thing i wish i had straight floors and and something to look into the future but for now it is the way it is this is not very really safe but by now it's muscle memory so just just uh go about it the way it is um this here is just my coolants and stuff i'm working on finding a way to organize everything it's coolant and it's way oil for my machines um tool car here is for tooling so i never keep uh, tooling in stock everything you see here is from the jobs that I did already because of my limited budget when starting out I only uh, bought tools that were necessary for that job so uh, this is not the way I wish to organize tooling and now that I am starting to to build up a little bit of uh, inventory um, I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do and what I want to organize um, and that's something to work on so tooling is the way it is now but it's gonna change soon that's one of my top things to change um, I only have one of these sets and they come in handy a lot so I'm probably gonna buy another one the rest of this stuff here is just some pull studs um, general screws washers wire uh, batteries um, all of this really needs a lot better organizing and, and space to put but um right now this wall works well and and uh, the rest of the stuff in this tooling is just um some electrical stuff some um that's mostly electrical some plumbing stuff a lot of these uh these uh drawers just need work so i'm not gonna open all of them but that tool part sits there that's mostly my tooling car and i'm gonna make it my tooling car um i have a tv in the shop because just because i can now <laughs> but it, it it doesn't get used a lot but sometimes when i have uh, longer programs i turn it on and and I, I spend a lot of time here by myself so tv comes in handy so that's coming in from that door uh, over here that's Behind this wall is the little anodizing room and over here is where my office is. I have a schedule of work that needs to be done. Um, things like this hole in the wall here still need to be uh, repaired. This shop still needs to have a lot of stuff repaired and, uh, and uh, walls finished basically. The electrical needs to be all revamped and I need to put down new wires for air and and new electricity and everything here came together really quick all the insulation and all this came together really quick me and my dad built this whole thing basically so it it needs work and and i know that but this is my shop this is my uh office here i have a printer to print drawings i have a little uh, filing cabinet for documents uh that's an assembly that i'm gonna be working on for a customer uh, I use a uh, fusion to program everything uh, you can see I've been watching videos on a new 3d printer I want to buy a new 3d printer because the one I had broke and and it wasn't very expensive it was just kind of to try and see what um, 3d printing is all about and that and 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 it came in handy I can do a lot of shop improvements with 3d prints and at one point I actually sold some 3d printed stuff so I'm looking for a new 3D printer. Uh, it's just my chart up there, uh, speakers. I built a shelf for a computer. Like I said, the space is very really limited, so I do what I can 
uh, the bench and the computer before I started my business. The computer is five years old. I've had it for my gaming. I used to game a lot and the bench was just the same thing for gaming. And then once I started my business, I brought everything everything here and everything's still working. And uh, I'm blessed. So under here I have a shredder. Every time I'm done with the uh, customer's drawing, I shred it um, because it's confidential stuff. And that's just a speaker to blast some music and uh, annoy the neighbors. This toolbox here, um, this is where the 3D printer is going to go on top of here. But I've been using it for um, for inspecting some stuff. I have uh, my measuring instruments here. Uh, everything I do is plus or minus 5. I can comfortably hold plus or minus 3 tau tolerance. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff that's plus or minus 1, but it, it needs close reviews and and I, and um, from me before I do it and but I've always managed to to get it done if I don't have something to measure with um, I have a buddy that has a CMM that I can go and use and um, it works well so there's some threading tools when I thread by hand I usually try to do everything on the machine um, some of these other drawers still need work, like I said. And this is a bench that I built with my dad when I when I when I everything that I started was a limited budget, so as cheap as possible. So we built this bench, which actually is really good. It came out really decent. It's really really strong. It's eight foot long. And uh, I, I saw a YouTube video of some guy using these fixtures or these uh, whatever this is called to build um, to build a small workbench. So I said I can just do that. So we built this, and it's it's been great. I don't know if I need this workbench for C a lot of CNC work. I think I need a I need a bench like this on each machine. But. Uh, before I did CNC work, it, it was very useful to have a bench in the shop, so I figured I'll put it in now. I have a little bit of room and, and, and it comes in handy like when I have to do these assemblies. Um, I can work on the assemblies on the bench and uh, it's been really good. Everything up here you see is not going to be something, that's not going to be branded tools. This is all really cheap stuff. That I bought, like I said, the limited budget. I have. Uh, I'm, I strongly believe in um, uh, getting what you pay for, but I, I was just very, very limited on the budget, and I needed Allen wrenches, I needed screwdrivers, I needed, I needed stuff. So it's very basic set of non-marked tools. Um, you know, I've seen some of the shops and people inherit. Uh, decades of, of trade and, and they inherit proper tooling and, and stuff but I don't have that but I'm okay I, I, I've i this works well for me and and um, I'm just blessed to even have any of this to be honest um, I built these racks uh, to hold it to hold the tool holders uh, both of the machines that I have now take BT30 uh, the Hurco machine, we'll go over machines that I have, uh, likes these enclosed or round uh, tool holders. If I put this in, it throws it. and um, So I can't really use this. Maybe I can use these on a Tormac, replace the pole studs, but I will be investing more money into uh, this style uh, instead of the one that I'll open because Hurko will, will throw it and I this here that I have basically can't use right now um, Some uh, collets here. This is my clever way of um, Storing these I can if I have a tool I can just come here see what size I need and Use this bench to quickly put it in um, I have some ER32 which really don't get used a lot. I, I use a lot of this ER16. Um, but this is very minimal amount of tool holders. And I want to have a lot more tool holders, a lot more ER collets. Um, 
so it's it's a plan to to get more so back up here a little bit this is where we came in my office uh workbench uh let's talk about this stuff down here i just have a bench grinder um by the way i use this little remote controlled um, a unit to cool my shop it also does well on heating the shop over the winter but it does a really good job of, of cooling it and, and keeping the climate I got the doors open today because it's just a nice perfect uh, perfect weather today so it's turned off but that's what I use to, t to control the temperature this here is, is a, just a bench grinder when I bought the bottom piece of it it didn't fit with the top so so I did what I could to make it work with this wooden wooden uh, piece but um, it works well it doesn't get too much use but it works works really good I have some um, other hand tooling there but I'd like to invest more money in uh, in um, the what are those things called uh, um the vibratory um whatever they're called i have a couple down here the oh my mind is going blank tumblers they're tumblers oh man that was painful um i have some of these that worked well for what i needed so far but i i i want to get um uh, some better media for it and I want to get one bigger unit eventually but for now I'm, I'm very happy with with what I have uh, now when it comes to material and, and my saw this is uh, I'm probably sure you can recognize this, this is a, just a cheap small saw from a local um, tooling store and uh, it worked great for what I needed most of my material I actually buy pre-cut. I have some, I have uh, enough suppliers around that I can just call in and get most common sizes the same day. And they only cut it for a few more cents on a piece. So um, this only gets used if I have a personal project or if somebody, I've done custom, I've done uh, parts for customers in a over 24 hour period. So it came in handy to use when, um, I need the stuff like that just to cut up some of the small pieces here for a job that's due next day. I try not to do a lot of that because it's a pain, but um, I also want to be flexible for customers and do the best I can. Here's my materials. Uh, this is all leftover stuff, and this is stuff that... Um, I got from another shop that is just their drops. They wanted to scrap a lot of it. And I was like, that's a lot of big pieces that I can use. So most of it is aluminum 6061. This is some A2, this is some aluminum bronze left over from a job. I have some Delorin. Um, that's another piece of steel. Um, that's just the extra stuff that I it's not planned for anywhere so it sits here until it gets used the rest of this rack is just some 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 chemical i have the foam still from building the insulation and the rest of this shop uh, i like these plastic bins because i can if the job's small enough i can use these to put the job inside inside of them these work very well for the same thing also um, this is just for my tooling organization, some gloves there. These boxes have random wiring and electrical stuff in it. Um, these are my dad's, I think he put them here so they don't freeze over the winter and the outside shit. I got some WD-40, some um, anti seize lubricant, some cutting fluid. Um, all just minimal stuff, this is air tool lubricant I believe yeah um that's for i have a little uh cleaning uh cleaning um sitting right here it's an ultrasonic cleaner and and uh 
it got a lot of use actually but it's kind of small so I can't wash all the parts in them but when I can I always use it um, and then outside is just uh, the front of the house so I won't go out there but uh, the barn door here uh, we had to take off the garage door and build the barn door to be able to bring this work in um, uh, this here is a welding table I picked up for like 10 bucks on the place I used to work at and now it gets used to store sometimes it gets used for welding I do not do any welding for customers because I take in one welding class and I don't consider myself a welder but I welded a lot of uh, stuff for myself enjoy it uh, but I would uh, probably never offer it to a customer because I'm not a welder uh, anyway, this gets used now for incoming work, and this is my work for next week or so, um, which I need to get started on. So, um, okay, let's talk about the machine. So, this is the first machine I purchased. Uh, Tormac, everybody is familiar with Tormac. Um, I won't talk too much about that. I think it's important to know what you are buying for what you need and if you have realistic expectations of things you will be very happy i've been very happy with this this machine um and it did well for me did a lot of work for me and i was able to buy this other machine working on that so i'm i'm very happy with it and if if people have more questions and things about um, machines and stuff let me know in the comments and i'll answer them uh, this thing here I kind of built myself because I didn't like to have a PC sitting here like I said I'm limited with room so I got these rubber magnets um, just some wood I found sitting around um, about this this uh, keyboard because it was kind of right size to fit here um, I bought this from somebody uh, this is an aftermarket piece I forgot the guy's name on Facebook, but if anybody is interested, let me know. Uh, and then this screen I just bought on, on Amazon, I found a, found a kind of an external screen and I just kind of checked the dimensions of everything that will fit here. It's just a plexiglass thing with, with magnets. So none of this thing is bolted into the machine at all. It's just a lot of magnets. Um, and they're rubber coated to, to hopefully not damage the surface of the machine. So everything is just magnetized on. Uh, that's my logo. I, I 3D printed that and put it and glued it up there. Um, so yeah, this, this saves me a lot of room. It doesn't stick out too much. And the screen is small enough and, 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 and I can see. I also bought this aftermarket piece, which helps me uh, wirelessly put programs onto this machine never have to use a USB stick which has been pretty amazing uh, my air comes in there so yeah this is a, a Costco shelf that I have one piece there the other piece here and I just use that as my table right now um, for my machines Alright, so this Hurko, I bought this for $3,000. Um, the place I've worked at for a long time before, before I ever became machinist was selling their old machines. And they knew I started a business and they reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, we have this machine, do you want to buy it? And we agreed on $10,000, which I thought was a good deal. But then I calculated the uh, rigging to bring the machine here. I calculated that um, phase converter over there and this wire that I needed to put and also needed to call an electrical company to my house to bring another wire from the pole to the house. And when I calculated everything, it did not match to what I wanted to pay <laughs> for this. And I reached out to them and I said, I would love the machine, but I just can't afford it with everything that goes into it. And they said, "How about three thousand dollars?" And I and I, uh, I'm very grateful to them for that. So about seven thousand five hundred dollars, the cost for everything with the machine. Uh, I got this Furco installed and running, and 
and it's it's running great it's keeping tolerance and um, I, I invested money to buy extra um, vices machine came with all the tool holders it's it's a uh, 30 it's 25 uh, tools in the ATC and another five uh, manual tools that you can do so it's got a 20,000 rpm spindle on it uh, but it's an old machine, 2005. The reason it's turned off right now is because the spindle chiller makes a little bit of noise and the phase converter makes a little bit of noise. So I wanted to make sure that um, there's no humming noise when I make this video. But this this machine was a, a steel, basically. And I did buy uh, another machine. It's a Miltronics. Uh, that's that's gonna come and I gotta figure out a way to put it in here and that one has a four taxes um, so since I started my business I was able to buy one extra machine um, a year and my whole thing is if I can buy it and pay it off right away that's the way to go than buying buying new uh, it's got it's 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 positives and negatives about that, but it's, for me, that makes more sense and, and not everybody is that way and, and, and uh, I respect everybody's opinion. But I do have another machine, older machine coming that has a house four axis on it. The machine is Miltronics. So I do have a YouTube channel and there's no videos on it now, but I will be, I kind of want to share videos on that YouTube channel because um, I'm not gonna attempt to teach people machining or, or, or any of that there's plenty of videos about that I kind of want to share my growth because I'm very surprised I've surprised myself with where I'm at right now and where I was and I feel like I've seen a lot of people that are waiting for the right moment right opportunity to do something and if I was waiting for the right moment and the right opportunity, um, I wouldn't be here right now, even though here is just a, just the a beginning kind of a stage. Um, but I'm very proud of, of, of these machines that are not top of the line, but they pay for the bill so far. Um, and I'm very proud of where I'm at, so I just want people that watch this to to know there isn't the right time or right uh, point of when when you want to do something if you wait for that things are probably never gonna happen so uh, so on the youtube channel i will try to post videos of my progress bringing the new machine in uh, i can't share a lot of the parts i make or i can't share any of the parts i make unfortunately but i will be sharing my progress and my growth and where I go from here um, and to me this right now is it's been a blessing uh, but it's it's a doorway for me to go bigger and, and, and grow bigger so I just want to thank practical machines again for sharing my video and thank all of you for watching um, I maybe that was a little bit of a quick uh, tour but uh, there's probably more to talk about but um, I don't know how people will receive this and people want to know more and and uh, just ask questions and comments and, and if needed I'll make more videos even though I don't know what I'm doing but um, I enjoy seeing small shops like this I've sort of seen a, I really enjoy seeing small uh, garage shops with the start with one two machines and see how they grow um, big large shops are, are impressive um, but I love seeing how people started small and, and where they got to now and uh, it gave me a lot of inspiration and I think people enjoy seeing stuff like this so if people want to see more I will post more content uh, until then uh, thank you all for being here and, and I, hope, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day by the way my kid comes in here and he draws and everything so that's his artwork this uh, whole wall needs a new panel so I just let him uh, draw on there uh, until I get it fixed.